Welcome to Abundantly Rooted, where we discuss the unequivocal truths of Scripture so that you may have hope in life circumstances. Join us as we discuss difficult topics and dig into the living Word provided by our Heavenly Father to put on the full armor of God so that you may stand firm and fight in confidence each battle in life. Today, we face so much noise in life, whether it would be on social media or out in the world. It's hard to focus on the Lord and what he really wants for us in our lives. And that is what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about just the fact that the Lord wants us to resist those worldly things and come to him, focus on him and remember the treasures that he has given to us, the blessings, the uh, gifts and the talents that he has bestowed upon us, even before we were in our mother's womb. So welcome to the show. Yes, Christina. And I think that this is such a great topic in a time and timely, you know, that, that get the Lord put this on our heart because right now there's so much chaos out there and the world just feels like it's gone. So awry is the best thing for me to say. And it's even hard to discern what is truth. Hmm. What is truth anymore? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and, and the life. And, and so we have to be deeply abundantly rooted in the word to really discern and understand what the truth is. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And, and that is the crux of the whole matter. The, the whole basis of abundantly rooted is that we are abundantly uh, rooted in his word in scripture. Everything that we do going forward, everything that we make our decisions on should be based in scripture. And I think Beverly um, that we're looking at things in this world that are very, very difficult to understand. It's very difficult to discern. The, the scripture tells us that there's going to be a time where things that are good uh, look to be evil. You know, people are going to show those as evil and things that are evil, people are going to start believing are good. And I would think that we are in a place right now where we have so much indecision, so many different viewpoints that uh, we're in that space right now. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I ha I totally feel that way. Uh, my husband and I talk about this all the time that, and I think there are many, many Christians that um, if, if you're very um, deep in your relationship with the Lord, you're discerning the times. And they were like, oh, there's a scripture that says the sons of Issachar, you know, they were, they discerned the times that they were in. And I think that we're discerning the times that we're in. And if you are not abundantly rooted into the word, you're not going to know how to navigate these times. Because first thing I want to say from my heart, the government is not our God. And the government wants to be our God, but the government is not our God. And in Revelations 22 or 20, I'm sorry, verse 10, I'm just going to share this first part. Then the devil who had deceived them was fro fro thro uh, thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. So the devil who deceived them. So who is deceiving us today in our world? Well, it's not God. Yeah. Yeah. And when you have your focus on and you're, you're open to hearing everything that is delivered to you, like I said, all the chatter, all the noise, um, it's easy to get overstimulated. It's easy to say, oh, I've got to do this. I got to believe this. I've got to, you know, fall in line with this mainstream because if I don't do that, then somebody will look at me and say that I'm not, you know, on board. I'm causing trouble. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, encouraging great rebellion here, you know, right. but it, there does come a place where we have to say, hey, does this line up with my morals and values, but does it line up with scripture? Does it line up with what my heavenly father would have for me? And you may be in a place where you say, well, I, I don't really know what, you know, I'm supposed to do because this person over here, they say one thing that sounds good. And then this person on this side says something that sounds just as good, but they're completely different sides. So how do I know which one to follow? You well, know, you, that's, <laughs> why, that's, that's why you have to be in, you have to read the Bible for yourself. So there's, there's many, many people, Christina, that, that attend church and they, and they listen to a sermon from their pastor on Sunday morning, they go in and they, 
you know, they praise and worship and they listen to a sermon and they don't ever pick up their Bible for themselves to read it. And if you don't, if you're not in that and you're not reading that, you're not going to know what truth is. It's going to be just like what you said. Well, this person said this. So, okay, that sounds good. I'll go over here. Or that person said, no, don't do this. You have to do this. So then I'll run over there. And when you're in the word, deeply in the word, um, God's going to tell you, mm-hmm. you're going to hear from him. Yes. And, and that also comes in this place of wanting to um, please people, you know, right. and um, yeah, we, <laughs> we get in a place where where we don't want people to be mad at us or we don't um, want to lose our job or we don't want to um, make a client upset because we, um, you know, don't believe in doing a certain thing. And so we compromise and we, we uh, look at that and say, Oh, well, you know, it's just this time. But the thing is, is it doesn't become just this time. It becomes just the next time and just the next time until you completely are, um, you know, disassociated from the whole situation. I'm not sure if that was the right word, but, you know, you you don't you don't think about what you had started off, what you're uh, behind 100 percent. And you don't think about what God wants. You think about what the world wants. And it's very easy to be tempted. And it's very easy to get drawn into that circumstance and to those decisions that uh, people are making right now. And we're, we're not saying you need to do this or you need to do that. What we're saying is you need to, to seek the Lord and you need to open your Bibles, you know, right. and, and you probably always need to do that. <laughs> But we're in a space right now where things are really confusing, right? You know, people are are not um, understanding what they are supposed to do. They're thinking one thing and then they're learning something different and their friends are getting angry with them and their friends are leaving them. And there's a lot of animosity over social media. Right. Um, for little things. Right. I mean, just right. just little things over this confusion and this aggression that's coming from choosing different sides. Well, I think that the, the key word you said there, Christina, was confusion. Mm-hmm. And so um, who's the author of confusion? The devil. <laughs> Yeah. The devil's the author of confusion. So if you're, if you're feeling all this confusion or you're feeling drawn in, let me just say this weekend with everything that was, you know, that's been going on with Afghanistan, I found myself spending more time on Facebook (laughs) than I normally do. And, and, and then I realized yesterday and I kind of got drawn in and I realized yesterday, I was like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. You know what? I I'm going to lay this down and I'm not going there. I'm, I'm, I actually deleted it off my phone and said, whatever I need to do, I'm going to do for my laptop because I don't want to be in here sitting in front of my laptop all day. So I deleted it off my phone because I felt like there's nothing there's good fruit is not coming from this, mm-hmm, exactly. whether it's, it's, it's prompting an emotion up in me, even if it's righteous anger, you know, good fruit was not coming from that. And I think that when you're battling this, um, who owns the airwaves, Christina, what does the Bible say about the prince of the air? You know, it's the same thing as who's the author of confusion. And, Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like that, that um, during these times, the powers that be want to keep you so sucked in and, and, and have so much stimulus coming at you. You don't have time. You don't have time. You can't even settle down to go say, I'm going to go spend the next 30 minutes with God. It, you know, he said, be still. Mm-hmm. still. Yes. But how can you do that when you have all of this? And he also says in Romans 12, and we all know this scripture, and this is a new living translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you. Well, when you're spending all that time on social media, you're being transformed into all of this input. Yeah, definitely. And you're letting the world, you know, sway you on one decision versus another. I wanted to read um, part of my my morning devotion was reading in Proverbs. I love Proverbs. Um, The scripture, the whole Bible is an instruction book for our lives, right? When we don't know what to do, we can open up the Bible 
uh, and, and figure out something that we were supposed to do. Um, but today I was thinking to myself that Proverbs especially is an instruction manual. And so I was reading Proverbs actually started with 30, is it 31 is the Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 woman. <laughs> and so, yeah, I was reading Proverbs 31 and then I had made a note in my Bible to go to Proverbs 3. So I just started reading that and I completely forgot about that Proverbs 31 woman, which is um, something that I was really trying hard to study up on because she seems like she's an unattainable uh, person, right? She seems too good to be true. And I went to Proverbs uh, 3 and I read the verse that it referenced, but then I started reading all the rest of it because I had it highlighted. And so if you go to 3 and then 7, it says, do not be wise in your own eyes, fear, fear the Lord and shun evil. So, you know, you know, and then it says um, this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So first of all, I just want to say that when we go to scripture, that scripture is not to shame us. It is not to uh, put us in our place and not make us feel bad about ourselves. It's more of a warning. It's, it's telling you, hey, this is how life happens. If you do this, then this will happen. And so he says, you know, shun evil, fear the Lord, love the Lord, focus on the Lord and be able to say, no, I will not allow that noise to come into my, um, my home, my mind, my life. And just like you said, be still. We have to be still. And today it is so difficult when, Mm. you know, all the kids are being diagnosed with ADHD. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad for that. I have a child who has ADHD, maybe three. I don't know. We have only had one diagnosis, but um, I myself have felt ADHD and it's all this confusion. It's all the constant chatter that we get from social media that we get from all the different viewpoints. And we have to pull back from that. And we have to say, you know what, this is not healthy for me. It is not healthy for me to uh, pay attention to everything that's on TV, everything that's in the news. It's not healthy for me to listen to all the constant chatter over social media, whether it's a a post that somebody did, or whether you get caught up in reading the hundreds of comments that were under that post. I'm guilty. Are you guilty? Yes. (laughs) Yes, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's what you said. You said you took it off. And so I actually know a lot of people who are backing away. They're feeling this strong urge now, This, this which I believe is the Holy Spirit whispering, say, hey, you need to back away. You need to find a room. You need to find a space to be still. And it is so, so difficult to find a space to be still. I would venture to guess that most everybody that was listening to this at one point found a time where it was very difficult to be still or even find a place to be still. Because one of the top stressors in my life and a lot of people I know is time. Right. Right. And I think, you know, Christina, that, you know, if we carry this, this is around all the time. I notice if it's in my hand, it's just it becomes a, a just not without thought that you're, you're just going on it and, and you're checking when you sit, I can be sitting out on the back patio and it's just like, all of a sudden I'm just like, Oh, Oh, I need to pick I need to do this because it just feels uncomfortable to be sitting here and doing nothing. And I really do believe that it was designed to do that very thing and keep and keep your thoughts and your mind. And, and let's face it. Everybody, you, especially with Facebook, it feeds you exactly what you want to look at and what you want to see. You know, not much do you see the opposing side of things, maybe in threads you do. But for the most part, everything that pops up in my feed is like, yeah, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah, that's that's right. You know, yeah, you know, this is right. See, it's true because it's here. All right. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, we we have watched uh, shows, you know, where people talk about certain things like that. And that they may be true. They may not be true. I mean, you know, I'm sure some people would say it's conspiracy theory. But, yeah, it very much shows you things to spool you up. And it takes away that energy and that focus that you should be placing on the Lord and doing things for his kingdom. So social media is is a real big place of uh, confusion and just noise. We go on there, we try to decompress uh, because 
we have a whole day that's filled with whatever issues that we have going on. And we want to see what our friends are doing and we want to wish people happy birthday. And then sometimes we want to catch up on the news. But as I told my husband this morning, when we were having a conversation as years and years ago, um, I worked in, in TV and radio and I stopped cognizantly stopped uh, watching the news. And I did this because nothing is ever good. <laughs> nothing is ever good. And um, it's just depressing. You know, it, it changed our whole uh, manner, a whole atmosphere. And maybe I should not be advocating, you know, completely ignore the news because we do need to know what's going on. But I was telling uh, Beverly earlier before we started recording that, you know, we read a story today about a mom who lost custody of her, her uh, child because um, of a vaccine, because she did not get a vaccine. So she lost custody of her child. And this just really upset me. And so it kind of set the tone for my day, you know, from the very beginning of the day, learning about this, thinking that me as a mom, knowing that, you know, as, as mothers, we go through so much, we go through so much, we have the child in our stomach for, you know, most likely nine months. And uh, we go through all the growth in that, and then we deliver, and then we have the children with us, and we're molding them, and we're uh, nurturing them, and we're caring for every little thing that they have. We're trying to teach them and um, instill good morals and values, you know, in them, and uh, just really make the best decisions for their health and make the best decisions for their education. And then this idea that you could lose your your child because of a decision that you you made that that for me was that part of that social media piece um that just set me off and um you know there's so many stories like that i mean maybe not necessarily for that same reason but there's so many issues um, i'm sorry stories that we read that could really hit our emotions and i guess that's what they're really geared to they're they're supposed to ignite emotion and you just like a character as when you watch a tv show or you watch a movie you know the villain is supposed to make you angry <laughs> you know it's supposed to make you sad you know if, if, if they make you angry or sad or have some kind of nasty emotion then they're doing their job they're a good actor um but it's just something that I feel like it can be really dangerous in how we make decisions moving forward if we're not uh, rooted in scripture, if we're not staying in scripture and refocusing constantly, because just as many times as we're able to have that silence and that stillness and get into scripture and read the Bible, you know, maybe you have five minutes today, maybe you have an hour tomorrow. And then immediately when you shut your Bible, something terrible happens or you read about something terrible or you have some kind of explosion, you know, in your home from a relationship type of thing or, you know, or job thing or something. And so inevitably circumstances happen. And you and I have talked about that kind of thing a lot over the last few years that when those circumstances happen, we have choices and a big choice is to run to your scripture, run to prayer. You know, maybe you, you can't, um, maybe you can't get the Bible out when you're in the car arguing with your kids or your husband or whoever it may be, or your wife, whoever it may be. Um, but you can, uh, pray. <laughs> you can say a silent prayer. It might not be as, um, it might not feel as effective as the prayer that you would have in, um, quiet, where you can kneel and, you know, focus, but you can pray, you can ask for help. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, what, what would you say, Beverly? What, what kind of suggestions would you give people? Because we can't get away. It's very hard. I said a lot of people have backed away from the social media, but it's very difficult because people are in business and they do a lot of business online and things have been shut down. Um, businesses like brick and mortar businesses have folded. Uh, small businesses have folded. Um, you know, you're coming into this place where you're seeing, well, hey, I can't go here or I can't work here if I don't have something, <laughs> uh, uh, you know. And so how do you get away from all of this and spend time with the Lord? I, I You know, it can be super difficult. Well, you know, I had to 
I, it, it, this may sound crazy to you, but I had to create a calendar and do time blocking. And I had to actually put it in my calendar and say, okay, from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., this is my time with God. Whatever time in the day that you know that you can make that happen. And you have to stick to that schedule. So, you know, it's, it's easy for me because I don't have a small kids at home, but it may be you might have to get up earlier than what you wanted to and start your day before everybody else does, even though you're like, oh my gosh, no, shut up woman. This is my precious you know, <laughs> time that I actually get to sleep. And I remember those days I had a kid that didn't sleep but for five years. He didn't sleep, but, um, and so, but it is, it's, you have to be intentional. You have to, um, you have to, you, the, it says in scripture that you have to have the word in your heart. You have to have it written in your heart because I believe Christina, that we are walking into a time where we might not be able to pick up this Bible. We might not be able to have it to say, I've got to read about this, or I need to know about this. And there may be a time and you need to, you need to have that written into your heart. And I believe that the Holy spirit will have it come, you know, bubble up out of you when it's needed, because there's times when I'm like, wow, where'd that come from? I didn't need it. Cause I, I can't memorize word anymore, yeah. but, but I do believe that in order to navigate the days that we're in, you you have to have that because otherwise you're going to be easily deceived. You're going to, you're going to fall into, well, let me, let me ask you this. What makes some of these Christians in other countries that are persecuted? And I don't know if you've heard the stories of where that, you know, they're going to steamroll over their children if they don't deny him. Um, and this is in, you know, like over in the Asia area, <laughs> I won't say. And so what are you going to do if, if, if we come to a place like that, where you as a mother, you know, are going to, you either deny Christ or I'm going to do this. Um, I've heard stories coming out of Afghanistan of people that are stranded in there and, and they're like, they are so they're the persecuted church and they're so strong in their faith. And they are saying, we are not, you know, they're on, on um, the phone with people communicating over here or however they're communicating. And they're saying, we are not going to deny Jesus. We're not going to, we're not denying him. Well, they live under persecution over there. They don't, they can't openly carry a Bible. They don't get to go walk into church in a nice, pretty dress on Sunday. They got to do it all underground. And we have no idea what's that, what that is like in our nation. But this is what I say to you, because this is, I am passionate about this. If we don't start standing up for those things, if we don't start pushing back we may be worshiping the same way, or are you going to be willing to stand when it, it's just as easy as a simple thing as if you like this mother, if you don't take this vaccine, then we're going to take your kid away from you. I'm like, I said this to you when we were talking about it. I'm like, my God, we hear these horror stories of these kids being placed in foster care and they're abused. And yet you wanted to pull this person away from their biological parent because of a decision you know, for something that we don't even know what the basis is behind it. Right. So if you don't take that time, how are you going to stand? Exactly. And we have to know, you know, like Esther, for such a time as this, there's always going to be, uh, there's always going to be a time where we're called, you know, we may not individually be called all the time. But there is a point where we're going to have to raise our hand. We're going to have to stand up and we're going to say, yes, Lord, give me courage because yeah. I don't want to do this. I don't, I really don't want to face this, but God, yeah. I love you. And I know that this is the right thing to do um, because you've told me it's the right thing to do. And I thought about that the other day. I said, well, what if this is my last day on earth? You know, because Beverly and I have both talked a lot about grief in the past, if you've ever seen us speak before. Um, and so we very much are aware of how quickly life can just be done, you know, vanish, you know, in a split second, in one moment you could have somebody with you in the next second, they're not. And it's, um, it's a frightening reality. It's, it's an awakening. <laughs> it's, it's a, um, something that puts your priorities into to place. And, um, so I'm thinking to myself the other day, what if this is my last day and have I been a good mother? Have I been a good wife? Um, no, but more than that, 
am I doing what God wants me to do so that I am sure that I'm going to heaven because I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> I don't want to be in hell. And, and, and hell is a real place. It's not just in the storybooks. And, you know, are we, it, and we know it's not by doing certain deeds, but do we right. love Jesus? Are we asking for that uh, repentance? Do we know that he took our sins so that we can live here and so that we can join him in heaven? Do we, do we say, Hey, you know what? I've done this thing and I know it's wrong and please Lord, forgive me. And I'm not going to do it again. I repent of it. Or do we say, Hey, I'm doing this thing and it's wrong, but eh, I'll try again tomorrow. You know, and it's very easy to get caught up once you get away with something one time, you know, just to keep, keep going with it. Oh, yeah. and say, oh, yeah. oh, eventually I'll, I'll get over this or I'll grow out yeah. of it, you know? And, and what if, what if there's no eventually, what if today is the day? You have to be ready. It, and it is. And everybody doesn't think today's going to be their day. But, you know, here's one thing that my husband says about that, Christina, is all sin starts very, very small. It's very subtle. And so you may slough that off, slough that off, slough that off. Yeah. But it eventually grows. It becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in this web of deception. And, and, I, and, and, the, and Satan is all about deception. He deceived Eve. He, he's all about deceiving us all throughout the word. You see deception after deception. And so if he could, he, when I think of this, Adam and Eve were in the garden, they walked with God. I mean, they walked with God and, and Satan was able to deceive Eve there. Mm -hmm. And they, they walked with him and, and fellowshiped with him and how easy and how subtle it is. And if you're not in your Bible and you're not reading and praying and strengthening, because that's where you're going to get your strength and the courage that you talked about. If you're not in that, I'm, you're going to find yourself one day going, whoa, whoa, where did, how did that happen? You know, and some people may say, well, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it, you know, it doesn't really mean this or that, but Jesus was always very, strong about a lot of things when he spoke to people, but you know, when he, when he healed people or delivered people, um, from demonic, um, entities, he would always say to them, go and sin no more. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't say, Hey, uh, you know, this is good. You're good. See, ya. you know, I'll catch up with you <laughs> next week. We'll, we'll go for round two if we need to. <laughs> no, he was, he was very specific. And how do you think he said that? Do you think he said, well, go and send no more. Or do you think he was, do you think he said, go and send no more. Or how, how, how do we read that? You know, in, when we read words, the emotions are not with them. So how did he say it? Was he very forthcoming? Was he very strong? I don't know. I don't know, but I think, I think of it as like a loving command. It's those instructions that we talked about in scripture where they're not to shame you, but they're to like basically warn you because if right. you do it again, you know, you might find yourself in places that you don't want to be. I mean, you know, what? so you, there are always consequences to our, our uh, choices and our actions. And um, it is, like you said, it's very easy to become desensitized to uh, something to, to sin when you're tempted by it. And, you know, you kind of test the waters, you put your toe in there, so to speak. And you're like, oh, that's not bad. And right. so then you put the rest of your foot in there and you're like, well, that's not as bad as I thought. And, and the, the thing about it is, is that can go two different ways. You can say, hey, I'm going to get desensitized to something to the point to where I'm going to be sinning and I'm not really going to think it's a big deal. But you can also say, hey, this is a way to find courage, <laughs> to test the waters. So you can find courage by just kind of getting in the water, so to speak. Um, and it's very important that we like ask, we ask the Lord to, to give us that discernment, to give us that understanding, to give us a clear path that we are to walk, because a lot of things we can look at as being a fine line. And it's very easy to um, fall into the path where uh, we are following the crowd, we are following the world. And I remember a pastor, my pastor, a couple of years ago was speaking about, uh, you know, like a wall between heaven and hell. And he says, you know, you can't, you can't sit on that wall, you know, because you're going to fall on one side or another. And you guess what? Guess who's standing at the wall? 
the devil's standing at the wall. The enemy's standing at the wall. He owns the wall. (laughs) Yes. So if you lean a little bit towards it, he's going to pull you over. So you can't stand at that wall. You have to be decisive. You have to, and, and that's hard for some people. It's hard for me. Like, goodness gracious, don't ever ask me where I want to go eat. You know, <laughs> that's kind of really simple stuff, but making big decisions, you know, we have to be in prayer about, we have to, you can, you can be in prayer about little decisions, you know, ask God to give you a parking place. If you're, you know, help you get somewhere on time, those, it doesn't matter. I know some people look at it and they say, oh my goodness, I can't ask God anything that silly. Well, yeah, you can. You can yeah, ask yeah. him anything. Yeah. <laughs> you can ask him anything. You don't have to have pride. You don't, you don't have to be prideful and say, oh, well, he's not going to be bothered with that kind of thing. He's the big boss. I have to only go to him with things I can't handle. No, no, that's not true at all. The thing is, is he wants to handle all your stuff from, mm-hmm. you know, the huge decision that you have to make about whether or not you, you put your kids in school or not this year, or you take this job or move across the country to getting that parking space and not being late for your appointment. He wants to handle it all. So you have to lay it all down. And, uh, you know, not, not try to keep picking it back up and, and trying to say, oh, well, God only wants me to really do things for myself. He's not going to help me if I don't help myself. Well, maybe that's, that's true. If you're sitting there and you're, um, you know, you, you just, you refuse to move, you know, you're, you're being uh, rebellious, so to speak, because you, you know, a better way and you're not choosing to try to do anything about it. And when you know that that would be what God would want you to do until he gives you better answers. But, um, you know, it's, it's not for us. Uh, there was that, I don't have, uh, my Bible out right now, but, uh, in the same chapter of Proverbs, Proverbs three, it also, you know, tells us that we need to, um, I think it was in chapter three. Anyways, it tells us we, we have to you know trust God and we have to give everything that we have. It says surrender all to the Lord. I think that was what it was. It was surrender everything. You're all. And it doesn't mean just give him this little piece of me that I, you know, sort of kind of don't want to deal with. And this little piece that's agitating me and this little piece that, uh, you know, I, I think I, I would like some help with. No, it means give it all to him. Even the stuff that you like that you you know, want to hold on to like you're precious. Um, and, and that also makes me think of this, this graphic that is circulating in social media with Jesus and a little child. And I've posted it before in my stuff because I just thought it was fantastic. So there's a little child and they have a little teddy bear and Jesus is holding his hand out. It's like, give this to me. And the child doesn't want to give it because that's, that's the child's teddy bear. It's, it's their precious. And behind Jesus' back, he has this huge, huge teddy bear, something much grander than than we could ever expect. And we have to trust and we have to have faith. Well, and I and I was trying to find it so I could give you exactly where it was, but it's, I'm reminded of the in Elijah with the woman with the oil, and you know, he came to her house and she the Lord sent him to her house and she was like at the very end of her oil to make and and the flour or whatever, to make the bread. And she had nothing left. And he said, give me what you have, Mm -hmm. make it and give it to me. And that was everything she had. So then she did make it to him, but then what happened? It just kept multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. Mm -hmm. And she had more than enough. Mm -hmm. So that that's just kind of like a, a one little example, or what about the, um, the woman with the alabaster, the alabaster expensive perfume. And she, you know, anointed Jesus with it. It was like, then there were disciples that were like, well, that stuff's worth some money. We, you know, we could be selling that and we could help the poor in, 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 in the mindset there was like, uh, that's money. And I want that. But anyway, that woman had that she was a woman that didn't probably have that kind of money or that kind of expensive perfume then, but she gave it all Mm -hmm. to him. Yes. Kind of along those lines. Yeah. And I actually found it. So you're going to laugh. And those of you listening, we're probably going to laugh too, because this is like a verse that everybody knows. So it's Proverbs three, five, and it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We all know that part of the verse, right? But rarely does uh, the people continue and say in all your ways, submit 
to him. So you have to trust. Yes. And we all know that don't, don't worry about how we understand things because God's understanding is much greater than ours, but we have to submit to him and he will make our path straight. So, um, you know, a lot of people may not have heard any of that other than just trust. Well, yes, right. we trust. Yes, we don't listen to our own understanding. We know God's ways are better than our ways, but we have to submit. That is a key part of it. And, have to, and that's the part of trust. Because if you, you think about relationships, if you're in a marriage, if you're not submitting to your spouse, then you're, you're showing that you don't trust. You're showing that you, um, you, you think your ways are better than their ways. And so you have to be able to submit to one another so that you can actually come together and make the best decisions possible for your family. Um, and, you know, of course, on a, on a much broader level, when we look at God, we have to say here, God, here I am here. I am all of me. I right. trust you that you're going to give me what I need. And I trust you that you're going to take me to the place that you want me to be. And that's going to be whatever is in your will and to have me serve in that area. And what, and even if that, even if that means I'm going to lose my job, if I don't, you know, if you are, if God puts a strong conviction on you to not do something that your employer is asking you to do to, mm-hmm. you know, in order to stay employed. Okay. Do you trust God and submit to him? If you feel strongly that God is saying, don't, don't do this, don't do this thing. What about when you and I both went through child loss, Christina, was it easy for you to submit to God when, when you know, when you were losing your daughter or when I was losing my son, was it easy to submit when you, it's easy to say that scripture, but was it easy for you um, in the beginning? No, 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 no. There are all the whys. Why, why me? Why this? Why now? Why her? (laughs) And my whys. Yeah. And we, we've talked about that, that a lot too. So it's not, we all go through situations that it's di- that are difficult. You know, like you said, if you're asked to leave the job, uh, there was another pastor that I had listened to speak on that very thing. He said that uh, something was going on inside the company and the employee um, didn't want to do something that they were asked to do because they knew it was wrong. And the boss basically said, hey, if you don't do this, then you're fired. And, you know, they went to this particular pastor and talked about it and they're like, Hey, you know what to do. And so that employee ended up losing their job because they refused to do that thing that was not, you know, not right. And, um, you know, the story ended where the, the boss was fired because of wanting to do that bad thing in the first place. And then the person who had been fired for not doing what um, was compromising to their position was rehired and given the boss's job. So that goes back to that whole, you know, kid in Jesus with the teddy bear kind of, you know, scenario where we say, you know, we have to trust because God has more for us. He has more right. for us. And it's so scary. It's so mm-hmm. very scary to say, Hey, I'm going to leave my job because I have, no money. I have no savings. I have a lot of bills. I have to take care of my family. You know, um, I'm going to move out of town to a place where I don't know anybody. Now I know that kind of thing excites some people, but a lot of people get scared about that, especially if they're, they're leaving family or they're leaving, uh, something that is a known quantity, you know, where they, they have a good, comfortable job. They have people that are friends and family there. They go to the gym and they know all the people there, whatever it is that they're doing. It's, um, it's very scary to say, Hey, I'm going to put down or take up my mat. I'm sorry, not put down my mat, but take up my mat and follow you. (laughs) And that's exactly what we're, we're talking about here is, you know, just trusting God enough to pick up our mats and follow him. And um, God is after our faith, Christina. That's, that's what it's all about. Jesus always was talking about the faith the faith, because of your faith, you're healed because of, because your faith, he is healed because of your faith, this or that. And that's what, that's what it is basically is even though it's the unknown, the unseen, and it looks scary, God is after your faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trusting him. And he said, I will give you, I will give you all that you need. He doesn't say, I'm going to keep you as comfortable as you are in the place that you are, like you were describing, but he said, I will give you what you need. And, and, you know, we're 
spoiled in this nation. And I love my blessings. I'll be honest with you. I love every blessing God wants to give me, right? but I don't need, you know, I, I, he said, I'll give you food, water and and shelter. So you you may come down to that. And is it, are you going to be able again to stand if, if it's, it doesn't look that way because we don't always want to give up our creature comforts or Mm -hmm. those things. So well, and, and I heard a pastor today talk about the fact that, you know, God desires things for you, but you have to stand in faith and obedience for him to basically, you know, allow that to happen. And uh, he, I, I am very careful about listening to this person or that person who tells you to cross your T's and dot your I's and twist this way and twist that way, you know, before God will listen, because I think that God is a loving God. I think he's not that, um, <sighs> He is complex in the fact that he he knows everything and he is everything, but he is not that complex. I don't think when it comes to our relationships, we have to make the effort. We have to trust. We have to obey. We have to ask. We have to want. We have to desire. And right. if we want and we have uh, and we desire and we pursue that relationship, I think he has open arms. You know, that, that's just all there is to it. Is it's right. we want that. Does that mean that from that point on? you know, nothing's going to happen in our lives. No, but I do think that his desires are good for us. And I think that he wants us to enjoy our lives here and in heaven. Uh, There's a verse that I often talk about, um, you know, I'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, uh, wait upon the Lord. And I started using that verse uh, as it related to grief, when I talked to people about grief, and then somebody kind of challenged that verse and said, well, you know, the land of the living is in heaven. And I've started thinking about it. And I believe that the Lord wants us to have joy in both in earth, on earth, yes. and in heaven, not just, yes. you know, be in this miserable existence on earth, trying to, you know, thrash our way through all the thickness until we can finally get to heaven and enjoy life. I think that he really wants us to enjoy it while we are um, encouraging other people, while we are serving other people. And, and on earth rather, and, and then uh, also enjoy it in heaven because nothing is like heaven. Right. 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 Absolutely. I think you're right. (laughs) So, um, you know, hopefully that's some food for thought for you guys out there listening, you know, when you are tempted and and we are all tempted, you know, don't let anybody fool you. Everybody's going to be tempted at some point, but you know, you go and you pursue the Lord and he will take those temptations away from your heart and the things that you have done in the past and the things that you will do, you know, in sin, you honestly, earnestly seek forgiveness and you repent. And when you do that, you walk with the Lord, you run after the Lord and, and desire that uh, relationship with him. You pursue it wholeheartedly. He's going to welcome you in and, uh, he will help you resist that temptation to walk with the crowd, to listen to all the chatter and all the talk. Uh, and he will just guide you into a good place that he wants you to be so that you can serve him and his kingdom. And then you get to go to heaven. We thank you for joining us on abundantly rooted. And we ask that you continue to be blessed and bless others. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.